one day a philosopher walking out in the middle of the woods came face to face with a figure in a radiant beam of light, none other than God Almighty. As he had spent a lifetime pondering God's existence, the philosopher was only temporarily awed. You are the Lord, I presume. Yes, said God, I am. Well then, my Lord, I wonder if you'd be good enough to answer some questions that have been troubling me for some time. Certainly, my son. Is it true, Almighty, that for you, a mere moment is for us a billion years here on earth? Yes, my son, quite true. And is it also true that a billion dollars here on earth is for you but a paltry penny? Also quite true. The philosopher asked, Then I wonder if it would be possible for you, if it's not too much trouble, to give me a penny. <laughs> Why, certainly, my son, said God, I'll be back in just a moment. <laughs> On this New Year's Eve of 2017, with our reading from Ecclesiastes in mind, we come to ponder the paradoxes life and time. Let's take a look. At the end of this year of 365 days, or 8,760 hours, or 525,600 minutes, or 31,536,000 seconds, does anyone really know what time it is? As 2017 recedes behind us, we're inundated with the Year in Review magazine articles, top stories of the year on TV, and top songs of 2017 on the radio. Today of all days gives us an opportunity to consider all that has transpired in our lives as we've made this annual circuit around the sun. As we ponder this time, here is some collected wisdom on these matters from some quotable quotes from different folks. Our first is from Shakespeare who says, I wasted time, and now doth time waste me. Less poetically, but in the same vein, an unknown person said, time may be a great healer, but it's a lousy beautician. From Marilyn Monroe, I've been on a calendar, but I've never been on time. From Milton Burl, a committee is a group that keeps minutes and loses hours. From Michael Olsuler, the bad news is time flies. The good news is you're the pilot. Another unknown, time is God's way of keeping everything from happening at once. Probably one of the more famous quotes on time comes from Henry Van Dyke. Time is too slow for those who wait, too swift for those who fear, too long for those who grieve, too short for those who rejoice, but for those who love, time is eternity. Our last quote is for you Trekkies out there, from Captain Jean-Luc Picard of Star Trek who said, Someone once told me that time is a predator that stalked us all our lives. But I rather believe that time is a companion who goes with us on the journey that reminds us to cherish every moment because they'll never come again. What we leave behind is not as important as how we lived. After all, number one, we're only mortal something about time, especially at the end of a year, prompts us to consider what has gone before. We've sampled wisdom from today about the issue of time and living. The book of Ecclesiastes is an attempt by the author to discover life's meaning he wrestles with questions of purpose, reflects on issues of mortality, and muses on the inscrutable mystery of God. He is, in short, a philosopher, 
but one for whom God makes no appearance. Ecclesiastes is part of the wisdom literature within the Hebrew scriptures, one that includes the books of Proverbs and Job. Wisdom literature was something shared across the ancient Near East, spanning cultures as diverse as Egypt, Mesopotamia, and Greece. It was the wisdom of human experience, based on observations about the natural world and life in general. Because it was international in scope, Hebrew wisdom is striking for the absence of key themes elsewhere in the Old Testament. The promises to the patriarchs, the Exodus experience, the Sinai covenant, and the prophets. The particular salvation history of Israel is nowhere to be found in wisdom literature. And yet, it's part of the Bible. Despite its seeming lack of connection to Israel's story, it is part of Scripture and has wisdom to impart. Today's passage is a familiar one, often quoted at funerals and known to radio listeners from the 1965 song, Turn, 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 by the Birds, one of the few mainstream songs to set a large portion of Scripture to music. An ancient philosopher attempts to discern the divine purpose for life. The author seeks to find the meaning of existence, reflecting on issues of mortality all within the light of an incomprehensible God. What can this ancient text that wrestles with time and life teach us? There are at least three pearls of wisdom we can gain from this passage as we consider the year behind us and the year ahead of us. First of all, the author invites us to reflect. We hear that clearly in these words. God has put a sense of past into their minds. For everything there is a season and a time for every matter under heaven. We're able to reflect on the past, to consider what's occurred, to think about what's transpired. This Jewish philosopher would agree with the Greek philosopher Socrates, who said, the unexamined life is not worth living. Depending on our season in life, we have greater opportunities to assess where we've come from and what we've learned over time. Small children are incapable of such self-reflection. Their parents are often too busy <laughs> for such reflection, while their grandparents and great-grandparents often have too much time to reflect. In order to examine our lives, to reflect on the past, however, we need one crucial element, time. As Anne Morrow Lindbergh wrote in her book, Gift from the Sea, if one sets aside time for a business appointment, a trip to the hairdresser, a social engagement, or a shopping expedition, that time is accepted as inviolable. But if one says, I cannot come because that is my hour to be alone, one is considered rude, <laughs> egotistical, or strange. What a commentary on our civilization. When being alone is considered suspect, when one has to apologize for it, make excuses, hide the fact that one practices it like a secret vice. We need to learn better how to take time to ponder, peruse, and plumb the depths of our lives. Author Thomas More in his book, Spiritual Literacy, wrote, It does no good to think moralistically about how we've wasted time. Wasted time is usually good 
soul time. We need to take time for our souls, to consider the events of our lives and reflect. The first lesson from Ecclesiastes is to take time to reflect. A second lesson in considering the present moment is to rejoice. We hear it in these words, there is nothing better for them than to be happy and enjoy themselves as long as they live. It is God's gift that all should eat and drink and take pleasure in their toil. Examining our lives isn't simply a dispassionate dissection of the past, but a celebration of the gifts of the present. Although the author of Ecclesiastes often has a grim outlook on life, thinking it a vanity of vanities, there is more to life than that. He recognizes that within the vicissitudes of life between being born and dying, planting and plucking, mourning and dancing and so forth, there is a bright spot of joy in our present that God has given us as a gift, a time to be happy, to enjoy ourselves, to take pleasure in all our toil. Finding joy in the simple acts of eating, drinking, and working is God's gift to us, ones we can enjoy daily. If we cannot find joy in these essential elements of life, it's doubtful we'll find them elsewhere. Meal times are a thrice daily reminder of God's provision and blessings to us, and yet in our hurry scurry lives, we often miss these opportunities to be reminded of and rejoice over our blessings. Our supermarket shelves are lined with instant foods ranging from soup and coffee to microwave meals that can be ready in just a matter of minutes. Someone overheard a mother rebuking her son in the grocery store saying, put that back. It has to be cooked. We miss present opportunities for rejoicing because we're so busy rushing around. A British father wrote about an outing with his family where his wife implored their daughter to hurry up because there was no time to stop and blow dandelions. In response, the daughter raised the major philosophical issue of our day. Mommy, what is time for? In order for us to be happy and take pleasure in our lives in the here and now, we must also take time to rejoice. This is the second lesson from Ecclesiastes. Our third bit of wisdom is this, take time to recommit. We hear that in these words. God has put a sense of future into their minds. What God does endures forever. All should stand in awe before him. Reflecting on the past and rejoicing in the present are only part of the author's wisdom. He calls us to look toward the future. God gave us the ability to consider the future, for God dwells there as surely as our past and present. Because what God does endures forever, and because one day we'll stand before God, we are called to live with hope. A commitment to faith in the future is what drove a man named Walter. Just before 10 a.m. every Sunday, he'd open the Epworth church doors and build a fire in the old wood stove if it was cold, like today. 
or if it was hot, distribute hand fans throughout the pews. He'd open the Bible and read the selected passage for the week, praying for folks in the community. He'd end every prayer with a plea for God to remember and bless his beloved church. He did this every Sunday. What makes this story unique is that with very few exceptions, he began and ended every service alone. Why? Many years ago, the church had been built on land donated by a farmer with a stipulation that should the church stop meeting regularly, that the title would revert back to the farmer and the church would cease to exist. Why would Walter do this Sunday after Sunday? For him, God had a divine purpose for his life and for the church he loved, and so Walter was patient and faithful. One Sunday, a young family new to the area met Walter and joined him in worship. They returned next Sunday, and soon their children were bringing their friends. At year's end, a minister was hired, and today they're a small family church. The first Sunday in August is Homecoming Sunday, and families from across the nation return to that church for worship, followed by a picnic outside. While the children are playing and the adults are eating, you may notice a family wandering to the nearby cemetery. If you listen closely, you'll hear a parent say to their child, let me tell you a story about Walter. A man named Walter had a vision for the future and recommitted himself weekly to follow faithfully where the Lord led him. He trusted that what God does endures forever, and so waited patiently until God's purpose was revealed. Standing on the precipice of a new year, we're given an opportunity to recommit ourselves to the Ancient of Days who holds our future securely in hand. A third bit of wisdom is to take time to recommit our life. Dan Simpson, in an email, wrote, Imagine there's a bank that credits your account each morning with $86,400. It carries over no balance from day to day. Every evening it deletes whatever part of the balance you failed to use during the day. What would you do? Draw out every cent, of course. Each of us has such a bank. Its name is Time. Every morning it credits you with 86,400 seconds. Every night it writes off as lost whatever this you failed to invest to good purpose. It carries over no balance. It allows no overdraft. Each day it opens a new account for you. Each night it burns the remains of the day. If you fail to use the day's deposits, the loss is yours. There is no going back. There is no drawing against tomorrow. We must live in the present on today's deposits. Invest it so as to get the utmost in health, happiness, and success. The clock is running. Make the most of today. To realize one year's value, ask a student who failed a grade. To realize one month's value, ask a mother who gave birth prematurely. To realize one week's value, ask an editor of a weekly newspaper. To realize one hour's value, ask the lovers who are waiting to meet. 
to realize one minute's value. Ask the person who missed the train to realize one second's value. Ask a person who just avoided an accident to realize one millisecond's value. Ask the Olympic athlete who just won a medal to realize eternity's value. Ask someone who just committed their life to Christ. Reflecting on the past, rejoicing in the present, recommitting for the future. This is wisdom, not just for this New Year's Eve day, but for all the days the Lord of time gives us, in whose name we pray. Amen. Reflecting on the past, rejoice.